Hello guys, welcome back to another video. Today we're going to be looking at the difference between solo and basically pool mining to different coins in regards to if you should solo mine or pool mine a bunch of coins for, you know, rewards later down the line. For example, this is to do with the bit axe, but it kind of pertains to any kind of solo miner unless you probably go around 20 terahash, that's like the maximum. And then I think you should just go for profitability. But at the lower hash rate ones, so lucky miners, solo miners, or any lottery miners, there is a debate whether you should go for, you know, reliable profits over time versus just solo mining for Bitcoin. And we talk about it a lot on the channel. And there's no real definitive answer. I'm just going to be giving my opinion on kind of what I would do over time and giving you some kind of mathematics behind all of that. So just today we have the three coming along here. We do have another one arriving very, very soon. So another bit X gamma arriving very soon, which you'll see on the channel. That is going to be arriving maybe within the next week. So there will be videos on that. And it's going to be a video of us purchasing it off AliExpress. So there's been a lot of talk about whether you can get a bit X for cheaper. It is kind of an experiment that we're just going to go for. So we've actually bought one and I'll kind of show you the hash rates, give you an update if it is actually a bit axe miner or not, and if it's kind of worth it to buy off AliExpress. But more on that as we go later into the week. So there should be a video coming out when we get a hold of that. Just looking at the hash rates here. So this is what we're going to be basing today's calculations on. Around 560 on the max. We have around 700 on the Supra and around 1.67 on the gamma. We have just restarted this, so that's why it says zero shares rejected or 4,000, but on here we have 84,000 and 93,000. So we're currently running it to solohash.co.uk and our best difficulty is 612. But the main thing that we're gonna be using the calculations for today is the total hash rate and then the block probability that we see there. So yearly, one in 7,528 years. So the main thing I want to talk about today is if it's worth it to mine pretty much anything else to bring in a steady hash rate, I guess. And the only feasible coin with these solo miners is probably Digibyte. So that's what we're going to be basing some of our calculations on today. And that is going to be able to return pretty reliable blocks. I know it comes down to luck, but with this hash rate, we'll see in the calculations, but it's going to be able to reliably hit blocks within a certain time period. And then we're going to compare that to maybe solo mining and pool mining against Bitcoin or Bitcoin Cash, something like that. So as I said, we're going to be going on this hash rate here. So 2.61, we're just going to take it over to the Digibyte calculator right now. And we're going to be 2.61 and we're going to click calculate. That's 5.1. Let's change it to 6. And we click calculate and it's going to give us the estimated rewards over time. Now it is very dependent on the difficulty on the network, of course, but we're looking for something that is close to the block reward. So that's going to give us the time frame that it's going to take reliably to hit a block. For example, the block reward right now is 306 and within a month we should have earned 447. So reliably we can say within three weeks we should have hit a block on Digibyte. As I said, it does come down to luck, but we're just going based off averages because that's mainly how luck works in mining. So the main calculation that I would show for this is going to be kind of the odds of hitting a block in a year for Bitcoin mining, and then how much we would hit over that many years on Digibyte. Obviously, I'm not taking into account the halvings. We're just going to go based off of what today's price and block rewards are but i'm sure there's a calculation out there that you can bring it down to whatever the halvings are and estimate that over time but we only have today's prices and we're not going to know the price of the block you know four or five years down the line because it's very dependent so we're just going to go based off today so the calculation that we're doing here is we have a block reward of 306 digibyte and that converted into USD is $2.48. So we're going to be hitting that reliably, hopefully, every month. 
which means we can do a simple calculation. So we take the yearly here, which is our odds yearly. So seven, five, two, eight. And then we actually times that by 12, because that's going to give us it in months. So 90,336 in months. And then we times this by the block reward, which is 2.48 USD. And that gives us 224 thousand USD over the next 7,000 years. Obviously, we're not going to be mining for 7,000 years, so it doesn't really matter. So let's actually take it down to a realistic number. Let's say in the next 50 years, how much you would earn over time, and then compare that to maybe Bitcoin Cash as well in the next 50 years. So to do that calculation, simply we just do 50 times by 12, because that gives us the months, times by 2.24 or 4, 8, whatever the rock reward was. And that gives you a value of $1,488 over the next 50 years if you ran these on Digibyte. Also, we're not looking for the power cost either. But realistically, it doesn't really work out to mine Digibyte for that many years. Regardless, same thing happens for basically any coin because of the halvings and you don't know the price in the future. So in 50 years, we're gonna say 1,500. And we can actually do the same calculation for Bitcoin Cash here. So we do 2.61 and we calculate that out. Block reward currently is 3.13. And that would bring us, let's see here. So we earn 0.011528 every month. And we just do the block reward is 3.13 divided by 0 0.011528. So divided by the months, and that gives us how many months it would take to hit a block. And we just divide that by 12. So 22 years to hit a block at this hash rate. So if we're going based off the 50 year kind of time period that we use for Digibyte, let's just say that this is two blocks in 50 years. So two blocks of Bitcoin Cash in 50 years. And we can do the calculation here. And that gives you 2,068 USD. So Digibyte was 1,500. Bitcoin Cash is 2,068. Now there is going to be halvings. As I said, we can't really factor that in. There's going to be, I don't know how many, it'd be five halvings before the 20 years is up. And then a further five after that for the overall 50 years. But that's going to apply to Digibyte as well. And Bitcoin Cash is a slightly bigger coin, so it has more market cap, there's more price in it. Digibyte is a smaller coin, but it's the only feasible coin that we can actually mine with to reliably hit profits with these solo miners, so that's why I was kind of using it. So what I'm trying to prove here is as you go up, there's not really much point in solo mining these smaller coins. I know we have done it in the past, but even with Bitcoin Cash, that has increased quite a lot. And it's way better odds, but even yearly for Bitcoin, we have one in 7,000 years. So Bitcoin Cash is very feasible. And I think a lot of people have been solo mining and hitting blocks on these solo lucky miners, but it doesn't really make the news because there's not really much point in reporting it because everyone is going after the Bitcoin blocks. And as we've had more and more of these come on, the chances don't increase for you personally but they increase across the board for all solo miners to actually hit up into the difficulty of the Bitcoin network. The more that are out there, the more chance that one of them will hit a block. It doesn't necessarily increase your chances because there's more hash rate coming on the network. But overall, if you were to go based off of, you know, the next time frame, let's say it's within the halving, so the next four years, you could pretty much say that the Odds of you hitting a block with one of these is very, very low compared to how much you would actually earn mining Digibyte. Now, there is a question of if you're hitting a massive difficulty, you could be hitting up into maybe a Bitcoin Cash difficulty and missing out on that if you are pool mining at the time. But let's just do some calculations here. So we're going to go back to Digibyte and we're going to say in the next four years, you're going to earn one block every month. So you do four times by 12 that we see here. So 48 in the next four years times by 2.4, 
whatever the reward was in USD. And that gives you 115. So that's just solo mining to Digibyte. Not necessarily pool mining, but solo mining to Digibyte in the next four years is maybe going to net you $115 over time. And then we can just do a simple calculation as well to pool mining to Bitcoin. So we go coins here and we select Bitcoin and we put our hash rate 2.61. I'm not going to care about the power, just put that to zero, put that to zero as well because it doesn't really matter over time and click calculate. And you can see in the next month, if you are pool mining, you're going to be earning 3.82 in revenue. This is obviously based on a revenue figure as well. So in the next 48 months times by 3.82, that gives $183. So realistically, even if you were pool mining, you'd be doing better pool mining to Bitcoin than you would be solo mining to Digibyte. Now it is very luck dependent, but pool mining averages out the luck over time. This video is to kind of show that there's not really much point in pool mining or solo mining anything else other than Bitcoin. Bitcoin Cash, you can make an argument for it because the odds are actually feasible with a lower amount of hash rate within your lifetime, but the upside is only $1,000 or $2,000 depending on the price of Bitcoin Cash. But the upside of hitting a Bitcoin block is something like 220000 at today's current price. And that's going to be a lot more in the future. There's a lot of coins out there, such as Digibyte, that are not going to actually produce profits in the future, I don't think. Even with Bitcoin Cash, I don't think that that is even going to produce profits either in the future. I think there's only going to be a small amount of mineable coins left after the next cycle kind of ends. But I do see a lot of people talking about you know, hitting reliable blocks on Digibyte and then converting it into Bitcoin. But this kind of shows that you would make a larger percentage if you pool mined and actually pool mined the Bitcoin and got the payouts in Bitcoin over the next four years. You can obviously extend that timeline however long you want into the next year, into the next two years, three years, 50 years, whatever you want. But personally, the $183 that you're going to get back from Bitcoin mining Obviously, we don't really know what the price is going to be in the future, but I think it's better just to take the chance on solo mining to Bitcoin over basically anything else. Unless you have a higher amount of hash rate, maybe 20 to 30 terahash, that's when I would recommend maybe pool mining because the electricity cost is going to be slightly higher and that is actually going to eat into your profitability but with these solar miners, there's so little electricity that you shouldn't even worry about it. And as soon as you hit that 20 terahash threshold, I don't think you should be solo mining anymore necessarily, just because the electricity cost is way too high to upkeep that, unless you're living in places like Texas or those places with very low electricity costs. And over time, I think we're going to see more of a divide between solo miners and pool miners. And there's going to be a section of mining which is purely pool miners that are going and flocking to the lowest electricity rate places and then there's going to be a massive amount of people that are also solo mining with these lucky miners or lower hash rate miners like the avalon nano or even an underclocked s19 or underclocked s9 those type of things over time, I think there's going to be more of a divide between that and there's not going to be any middle people left, you know, for just solo mining with uh, the newest Bitmain miner. Every kind of newest iteration, if people buy it, I don't think the home miners are going to be able to reliably make profitability over time. And this is why Bitax and all these solo miners are so important is because they kind of outline that the mining is moving towards centralization. And this is kind of a revolution of decentralization for the hash rate. And we've already seen, I think those, there was one block maybe a year ago. I know that there was one recently because we made a video, but there's even been another one that's come along that was hit on public pool, I think a couple of days ago, which kind of just goes to show that there's more bit axes getting out there, more chances of them hitting a block. And the more blocks that they hit, a lot of people are going to go research it and buy their own one. So I kind of went off on a tangent in this whole video and 
it's not really about solo mining or pool mining, but it's just my thoughts. I don't know what the video title is going to be, but we'll leave it at that. Let me know your thoughts in the comments. Make sure you like the video and subscribe for more content like this.